Hello, my name is Jody Holmes and I'm a courseware developer with the Juniper Networks Education Services Group. In this learning bite, we are going to be discussing multi-chassis link aggregation groups, or MC lags. We will give you a brief overview of what an MC lag is and then show you how to configure and monitor an MC lag setup. If you're not certain what a link aggregation group is, we have two lag learning bites available on the Juniper website, one in English and one in Chinese. So first off, let's go ahead and get started with an MC lag overview. Multi-chassis link aggregation enables a device to form a logical lag interface with two or more other devices. The MC lag devices use inter-chassis control protocol, or ICCP, to exchange the control information between themselves. The diagram on the slide shows a basic MC lag setup. The CE1 router is an MC lag client device that has two physical links configured as a standard lag group. That is, configuration on CE1 is the same as with a standard lag bundle. In fact, the CE1 device is not even aware of the MC lag happening between PE1 and PE2. The PE1 and PE2 devices use ICCP to coordinate with each other to ensure that data traffic is forwarded properly. Uh, this type of basic MC lag setup provides only node level redundancy on the provider side. This slide shows a couple of examples of how MC lag can be implemented. The upper example adds two more links to our previous example for some link level redundancy. However, as before, there is still only node level redundancy on the provider side. The lower example shows a much more thorough setup. In this example, we have introduced a second customer device, CE2, along with dual links between each of the devices. With this setup, there is no single point of failure, and as before, the provider side setup is transparent to the customer side. That is, CE1 and CE2 are not aware their lags are connected to two different devices. There are two types of states that you can configure uh, MC lag to operate in, active standby and active active. Each state type has its own set of benefits and drawbacks. The original MC lag mode is active standby and is supported on both dense port concentrator, or DPC, and modulator port concentrator, MPC, line cards. Active standby mode allows only one provider edge node to be active at a time. Using LACP, the active PE device signals to the customer edge device that its links are available to forward traffic. As you might guess, a drawback to this method is that only half of the links in the CE's lag are used at any given time. However, this method is usually easier to troubleshoot than active-active because traffic is not hashed across all links and no shared MAC learning needs to take place between the PE devices. The active-active mode is supported on MPC line cards only. In an active-active setup, all links between a CE and PE devices are active and available for forwarding traffic. Because of this, traffic has the potential need to go between the PE devices to egress, so active-active mode requires an inter-chassis link to be configured between the two PE devices. This link is used to share traffic between the PE devices. This slide demonstrates the traffic flow that can be expected from both active standby and active active modes. In the active standby model, you can see that all traffic flows across the active link first and then continues on its way from the PE1 device. In the active active model, all links are active and traffic can be forwarded across any of them. Many factors come into play when deciding which model to use and where, and a full discussion about this is outside the scope of this learning bite. All right, let's get into uh, configuring and monitoring uh, MC lags. Okay, so you can see our sample topology on the right. We have three routers, CE1, PE1, and PE2. The uh, mode we're gonna configure first is the active standby mode, and we'll start with the CE1 router. Now, if you recall, the CE1 router has no idea that he is connected to multiple chassis, and therefore his configuration is just that of a standard lag. And to do that, you just uh, first of all you create the aggregated uh, Ethernet interface, set chassis aggregated devices, Ethernet device count one, and then you go ahead and add member links to that AE0 interface you just created. So in this case, we're going to set 110 
gig ether options 802.3 AD and specify our newly created AE0 interface. And we'll do the same for the gig E111 uh, uh, member link. And all we're going to do now is set up the AE0 interface with LACP active and configure it as a simple trunk uh, allowing VLAN 500. So set interfaces AE0, uh, aggregated ether options, LACP active, and then set interfaces AE0, unit 0, family, bridge, interface mode, trunk, VLAN ID list 500. And if we show that interface, you can see the simple configuration we've done there. We'll go ahead and commit this, and we'll see what our newly created AE0 interface is doing. I'll show interfaces terse AE0, and it's currently admin up, but link down, which is to be expected. Uh, the other side has not been configured yet. Okay, we'll move on to the PE1 router. Now, the initial part of setting up this on a PE1 router is exactly the same. So we're going to go ahead and create the aggregated Ethernet interface first. And add the member link to that. In this case, it's Gigi110. Now, after creating that, uh, the first thing you want to do is create the ICCP portion. And the first thing you want to do there is set up the service ID. Now the service ID is used by ICCP to uh, identify each instant and will match between PE1 and PE2. That is set under this switch option service ID hierarchy. We're going to specify one. And now we can actually create the uh, ICCP portion of this. That's done under the edit protocols ICCP hierarchy. And the first thing you do is set your local address. In this case we are 10.10.10.1 and you set up the peer 10.10.10.2 uh, we give it a redundancy group ID list we'll specify one this uh, this will come into play later on when we actually create the uh, the uh, multi chassis portion of this um, we'll give it a liveness detection minimum interval value of 300 and a multiplier of 3 if we do a show there um, we can see uh, the configuration we've just done. We'll go ahead and commit this. Now to save some time, I've already set up the uh, PE2 router on this. So we should just be able to do a run show ICCP. And you can see that uh, we're established and up and up. So that shows that uh, ICCP is working properly. Another command that you can use to verify this is the run show BFD. Uh, session detail command and you'll want to look for the client ICCP realm line in there which again is just another uh, way to verify that ICCP is working properly. Okay now that we've uh, verified ICCP is working properly with PE2 we can concentrate on the AE0 portion of this config so we'll go ahead and navigate there top edit interfaces AE0 and uh, we currently have nothing there the uh, first thing we're going to do is configure the LACP portion of this. Set aggregated ether options, LACP active. Uh, two other items under here, LACP system ID. And with 00, zero colon, zero, 00, colon, zero, 00. Now this system ID must match between PE1 and PE2. And as well the admin key. In this uh, case we're going to use the value of 1. Now the next uh, bit of config for this will be under the set aggregated ether options MCAE portion. We're going to give it an MCAE ID of 1. Again this matches between PE1 and PE2. The uh, next portion is the redundancy group. This must match the uh, configuration you set for ICCP. Uh, next up is the chassis ID. In this case, we're going to set PE1 as 0. Uh, PE2 is set with a chassis ID of 1. Next will be the actual mode. In this case, since we're setting up active standby mode, we're going to set it as active standby, obviously. Uh, this matches between the two routers. 
And the final thing is going to be the status control mode. In this case, we're going to make PE1 as active and PE2 is set as standby. And finally, we're going to set up uh, this interface as a simple bridge with VLAN uh, 500 on it. So set unit 0, family bridge, uh, interface mode trunk, VLAN ID list of 500. So if we take a look at our config, you can see the LACP portions, the MCAE portions, and uh, the unit 0 we just configured. If we go ahead and commit that, I'm going to enable it on... PE2 as well. Uh, again, this was just to uh, save a bit of time. I'll go ahead and switch back to PE1. If we do a uh, run show interfaces terse AE0. We're now showing up up. We can also do a run show interfaces MCAE. To look at that output, you can see that our local status is uh, active and our peer status is in standby, just like we configured. Uh, one more note, take a look at the peer IP MCP state of NA. Uh, this will come into play once we switch this over to active active mode. And finally, you can do a run show LACP interfaces. And you'll notice that uh, in this case, the PE1 router has been uh, chosen as the active node. You can tell that from the MUX state of collecting distributing. If we switch over to PE2 and we run this command, run show LACP interfaces, you'll notice that our MUX state is waiting. Um, again, this uh, shows that PE1 is the active router. And just to confirm even further, if we jump back over to the CE1 router, and we do this, we'll see actually uh, both states going. So you can see that uh, collecting distributing is the active uh, node, and the other interface is showing as attached. Now this information is sent from the PE routers to the CE device. And again, it has no idea that uh, it's connected to two different routers. So we've uh, just configured uh, active standby mode, and now we'll move on to modifying this configuration for active active mode. Converting this to an active active setup is simple. First, we'll go back to the PE1 router and we're going to change from mode active standby to mode active active. And then the final thing we need to do is set up the inter chassis link between the PE1 and PE2 routers. You do that with the set multi chassis protection, give the peer address, followed by the outgoing interface. And uh, obviously on PE2, the uh, peer address is going to be 10.10.10.1. I've already set that up to save us a bit of time. Commit this. And if we go back to the CE1 router and we do a run show LACP interfaces, you'll see that uh, both its links now are in collecting distributing MUX state, which means both are available for forwarding. Well, that concludes our uh, learning bite on multi-chassis link aggregation groups. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology-specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence and the training community. From forums to social media, join the discussion.